Hey everybody, Brandon here from CAD Intentions, and in today's video, I'm gonna help you master AutoCAD's file types. There are a surprisingly large number of different file types and extensions related to AutoCAD and the uh, similar software like Sybil 3D. By the end of today's video, you're gonna know how to use them, what they're used for, and where you can access them within the software. This is gonna be a game changer and give you a leg up when you run into these in the real world. So let's jump right in and get started. Now, the default or bread and butter, as you could call it, file type, this is the one that you're going to use 99% of the time, is called a DWG. That is a .DWG, and that file, as you can see here in my folder, is the typical drawing file. It's gonna show the Autodesk or AutoCAD icon next to it, if you've got AutoCAD installed, and double-clicking it or dragging and dropping it into the top menu here is going to open it up for you. So we're gonna open up a drawing here by dragging it and dropping it into our AutoCAD software. Now you can see the drawing file has opened up instantly, and this is all contained within it. Everything within your DWG file is going to be your drawing. It's where your layers, blocks, objects, all of the time, blood, sweat, and coffee are going to reside. This is going to be one that you want to keep track of. And a pro tip would be to have a great file system. I've made videos and blog posts. I'll link some of those down below about a good folder structure and organization system for your files, including DWGs. But that's just the start. The next file type that I want to talk about is a similar or kind of buddy to the DWG, and that is the .dxf. The DXF file is a drawing exchange file, and this is going to be used primarily when you're sharing or exporting objects to be used in other software that refuses to accept a DWG. Now, more and more commonly, this is less needed, but there are still some legacy legacy softwares out there that don't accept DWGs. So if you need to share line work and objects, a DXF is your next best bet. You can create or convert your DWG to a DXF simply by saving as and hitting the drop down here and choosing DXF. You can even choose the different year versions and you can see that the latest one is a 2018 because these don't get updated often. And like I said, it's typically used as an exchange file to export your line work and objects into an older format for another type of software, something like a mapping uh, or GIS software typically. Now, next up, maybe my second most used file, uh, depending on what you're doing, and that is a drawing template file or a .dwt. Uh, the template file will save all of your standards, your title blocks, your blocks, layers, settings, all of that in a single file so that when you create a new drawing or DWG, you can start it by using a template file, the DWT. Now to do that, you can type in new and simply hit the drop down to select a DWT. And then you're gonna be able to choose from some of the typical ones built into AutoCAD, which are pretty basic and plain. Or if you've picked up my AutoCAD fundamentals course, uh, you'll have some custom DWTs available to you, or you can pick up my template package, which includes the title blocks as well. You can see the blocks all along the side. Both of those are available at the links down below and up above and on my website, cadintentions.com. Now, when you create a file from your template, it's going to bring in all of your objects that you've previously created. Now, one key and useful tip here is to create a few of your standard layouts with the proper size sheet and title block. That way, every time you create a new drawing, this is already going to be in it, along with, say, any layers or text styles that you've saved into your DWT. All right, so moving right along, we've got an equally important file, although ideally much less used, and that is the .bak. Now this stands for a backup file, and it's going to be automatically created by the software once you've saved your drawing uh, the second time. So saving it initially, you're gonna get your DWG, and now next time you save or close your drawing, AutoCAD is going to automatically add a .bak into the same folder 
as your previous drawing. You never need to touch these, but what this is going to do is create an almost identical backup file of the file you're working in. All you have to do to open or recover that file is simply hit F2 and change the file type to .dwg. That automatically converts that BAK into a DWG and you can start using it. This is great to have in case of emergencies as that backup. But remember, if your drawing gets corrupted and you've saved your drawing multiple times, typically that is also going to be in the .bak since it's simply a copy in case you lose or your current version gets corrupted or has an error. You can just go back to the last version, which is the .bak. Uh, but it's going to get overwritten every time you exit that software. This brings me to the next file type, and that is a .sv uh, dollar sign. And I'm going to show you where these are set up within AutoCAD. Every computer and every user is going to have a different location, so I'm not going to show you that. But basically, it is an auto save file. So when you're working in AutoCAD, in between your saves, the system is going to automatically save at set intervals. So if you type in options and hit enter and go to the open and save tab here, you can see automatic save is checked on and it's gonna do it every 10 minutes between saves that I've made. So you're gonna get a 10 minute backup automatically placed in a folder that you can check by going to the files tab and then scrolling down to automatic save location and you can see where these are going to be saved. Now, all you need to do is use the drawing recovery uh, manager or you can track them down in that folder in your options list and simply open up those files by changing the file type as well. Next up are .ctb and .stb files. Now, these are super useful in that they allow you to change the plot settings. So the CTB is the color table uh, plot setting and the STB is a style based uh, plot setting. So you can see I've got one here, an example plot style .ctb, and what these do are they assign colors or styles to different thicknesses and settings when plotting your drawings. So if you type in plot uh, you can see which plot style is assigned in the top right here. Uh, I've, I'm currently using .ctb, so you can choose grayscale or monochrome, or you can use a custom one. Now, if you're going to use a custom one, you need to either save it in the location shown in that options files uh, tab there, or you can add a new one by adding a folder. So we're gonna go in here, And you can see in the AIA plot style, I've got a CTB. So if I wanted to be able to access or use this file in my drawing, I need to copy this path. So I'm gonna use control C. I'm gonna type in options. And we're going to go to the files tab. And we're simply going to add a plotter or printer support file path, plot style, table search path. So this is where it's going to look for those uh, plot style. So if you get some from a client and you need to use them, you can either copy and paste them into this folder or simply create a folder on your C drive called plot styles or CAD or something like that and save them all there and then add that location. So I've just clicked add. I'm going to paste in my path and hit enter. And now I've got that new search path. So every time this drawing or CAD opens up, it's going to search these two locations and bring in any of my plot styles that I've got saved there. By hitting, typing in plot now, I can see in the dropdown that the AIA standard is available. Now this is going to change the way the drawing looks and every uh, company standard uses a different one, government standards use another. These are great to know how to install and use just like I just showed you since they're going to come up quite a bit. All right, so before we jump into the last few file types that you're going to need to know when using AutoCAD, I wanted to remind you to check out my AutoCAD Fundamentals and Workflows course. It's a video series where I teach you 15 years of tips, tricks, workflows, and fundamentals that are gonna save you a ton of time. Everything from creating templates and layer sets that I walk you through, 
to setting up drawings, inserting XRefs, annotative dimensions and text, exporting your files, PDFing and plotting, and then packaging everything up to send them to the client. We cover everything in this quick and easy to watch series, and you can get it now at the link up above and down below for a discount for viewers such as yourself. Now let's get back into today's video. All right, so we're going to move through these last few pretty quickly, but a .lsp is also known as a Lisp file, and this is going to help you with automation within AutoCAD. Uh, it's its own programming language, so you're going to need to know how to program a little bit and learn this language, although you can also just search and download these typically for free or a pretty minimal fee to automate a lot of common issues. Things like geo-referencing images, uh, like this one here says, it's going to add the area of an object as a piece of text. Little automations like this that save you a ton of time are great to have. They basically add new custom commands or macros into your AutoCAD by simply loading in a .lsp file. Uh, if you want to load one into your AutoCAD, you can simply type app load and browse to the file you'd like to load. Uh, for me, I want to load the one I was just using, which I think is saved here. Right there, click load. It'll ask you if you trust it and want to. You want to make sure you get yours from a reputable source. I'm going to load this one, and you can see my area text lisp was successfully loaded. Now I can simply type in AT and hit enter to activate my area text command. Pretty cool. All right, so the next file type is a .lin, and similarly, this one stores useful information for AutoCAD, but this is a line type file. So every time you use a custom line type, like a fence line or top of bank line, those kind of things, they're going to be coming from a custom .lin file. Again, to load those, you simply type in line types and load and then you can browse to where you've got some. This is where the default ones are going to be. Click on it, select, and hold shift to select multiples or control to select multiples. Select the ones you'd like to load in, hit OK, and now they've been imported into your drawing. And you can now select and use any of those custom line types. This is going to be super useful and one that you're definitely going to come across. And it's not always clear exactly how to load these files or use them in your day to day activities. Now that's about all for the most common files that you're going to run into or need to use in the way like loading, unloading, or accessing in AutoCAD. There are a few more like a .pc3, which is a plotter configuration file type. Uh, you can find those when you type plot. You're going to see them up here. Typically, you're not going to be customizing those since you're going to be using company standards and company files. Uh, another one would be .shx, uh, which is a custom font or shape uh, definition. Sometimes if you open a drawing and the text just doesn't look like right or line types all seem kind of busted, that's because you're missing .shx files. Uh, again, you can track those down and add those to the support file paths in the options. Uh, dialog box there. But again, this is going to pretty much encompass all of the popular and must know file types. I hope this video helped. If you have any questions at all, don't forget to leave them down below in the comments and let me know some of the file types that you've run into and might be useful for others to learn. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to check out my course, AutoCAD Fundamentals and Workflows in a Hurry. That link is up above and down below and have a good one. Cheers.